Well, the way I think about it is, uh, you know, we're interested in development and development issues. Uh, we're interested in the impact of financial programs. And, uh, and for both those reasons, it seems like we have to take into account how the entire economy is evolving. Um, people don't narrowly stay in their village. They can migrate. You know, they're forward-looking. Potentially, there's urbanization going on and so on. Uh, the, the starting point, you know, was what models do we have? Let's take an inventory of the different kinds of models we have to try to deal with some of the puzzles, like why is money leaving China while the rates of return are so high in that, in that paper that you mentioned, Growing Like China. Uh, it is true, for example, that a lot of macro guys are happy sort of modeling, you know, TFP as a, as a process. The business cycle literature following the lead of Prescott and Kidland is, is very much like that. Um, the development literature still has those ingredients in the sense of allowing individual talent and productivity to vary, but part of what we see in the aggregate data is an equilibrium phenomenon. The TFP has to do with a potentially improving allocation of resources across individuals and households. So that brings us back to the micro data. And, and the way I see the interrelationship is, you know, I could have equally well started with the micro underpinnings and built up to the macro rather than starting with the macro and then getting into the micro. It is true, I think, that you need to iterate back and forth. You, you tend to lose, you know, the perspective when you're just reading macro development papers, you know, so what does this have to do with the poor people in, in an Indian village or, you know, vice versa. When you're trapped in a village, you can't see what's going on in the rest of the economy. I mean, it's just my firm belief that we absolutely have to do both, and the, although how much of one versus the other depends on the application. And the cool thing about macro development is this whole generation of models that's coming along that are explicit about micro underpinnings and potentially testable. Whereas so much of the, of the macro literature, real business cycle literature, New Keynesian and so on, just make assumptions about what's going on at the individual micro level and never test markets, institutions, the nature of financial contracts are all primarily just assumed and taken as given in the more standard macro literature, whereas development is kind of a wonderful playground, if you want to put it that way, for seeing just whether you're going from urban to rural areas or one country to the, to the next, you can see these constraints being estimated and, and varying.